issues um, came together. Because um, it's, it's, to me, it's impossible to, to talk about anything related to horizontality or uh, democracy without taking care of, of um, feminist questions. Um, and of course, you all know we live in a patriarchal society um, where uh, certain men at least have uh, privilege and uh, the, the point is that this is not only happening in, I don't know, um, institutional settings or, uh, I don't know, organizations that don't think about these issues, but also in the political left. Um, and, and probably also in, in your environments, the environments where you work, even in environments that, that call themselves uh, feminist uh, spaces. And at the same time, feminism seems to be gaining momentum in, in the last few years with uh, different protests and, and different projects and, and uh, in public discourse. It seems that the topic is, is um, becoming more relevant. So it's a good time to, to <coughs> analyze how these two things, um, so the, the especially the political left and, and feminist, uh, feminism come together. Um, <coughs> and I'd like to, to start with a quote by, by um, a colleague in, in Argentina. She's part of a municipalist platform in Rosario, in, a, in a, one of the cities there. And the reflections she, she shared with me a few months ago is that in the midst of this, this uh, feminist revolution, we as an organization, her organization, need to make a decision w about whether our projects and organizations let themselves be permeated by it, by this revolution, or if, um, if they try to hold it back and suppress it. And so it's, it's um, you know, I think it's happening in many places that there's this reflection about the topic. Um, so I will shortly explain what, what we mean by feminization of politics and uh, give a, like a general uh, overview of, of the issue. Um, and then in the handout you have um, a really long and boring list of things, uh, reflections and tools. Um, this is the result of a long process of uh, net of work as a network that we've been doing with many municipalist organizations across Europe. Um, and then we produced a report with some colleagues from Madrid uh, about the topic, um, doing interviews to women working in municipalist organizations in different parts of the world, also outside, outside Europe. Um, so this is a result, is, this is a result of of a collective reflection about the topic, that, and it's an ongoing reflection. So it's not meant to be like a closed list of issues or tools or anything, but um, I thought it would be interesting for you to have it if you're interested. Like, it, sometimes it's good to have like, uh, like options and, and, and uh, material to, to engage in further, further reflection and work. So. Uh, we don't need to go through all that. Uh, we can go through some things if you if you like. Maybe some topics are more interesting for you than others. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We we thought that maybe the the dynamic of the session also could uh, adapt to um, how you are feeling about the topic and, and what you find most interesting. So so if it's okay, I will start with uh, sharing a few ideas about. Um, what is feminism in relation to feminizing politics? Um, and normally, when people talk about feminizing politics, they tend to think about female politicians and um, probably feminist policies, which are, of course, very, very important. Uh, but when we talk about femini the feminization of politics, we are of course, considering that, but mainly focusing on changing structures, ways of doing politics, um, relationships, languages, times, priorities, and things like that. So the work that we've been doing with these organizations is mainly a reflection, like a, an internal reflection within those organizations about how they relate 
with each other, how they decide together, how they perceive their work, and things like that. Um, some of the reflections, of course, apply to these kinds of organizations, which most of them, most of them are somehow engaged with local um, electoral politics. Um, and some, some might apply to other contexts, some might not, but um, the, 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 the conclusions might be interesting anyway. So, or not, we'll see. Um, so, it's important to stress that feminizi feminizing politics doesn't mean, uh, doesn't mean having, simply having more women in charge of things and having fewer men, which is also important because uh, politics is still very uh, masculinized in that sense. Uh, so, but it's not that. It, and it's not about feminine ways either. It's not about um, acting like women or it's not about being nicer, about, uh, I don't know, things that we associate with like, um, feminine uh, ways of being in the world. It's not about uh, that either. Um, and it's not a thing for women. Uh, it's something that that not only should every should be everyone's concern, but it's also that something that affects uh, everyone's um, uh, feeling of ability to feel at home in in political projects, uh, because it's not um, doing things in a patriarchal way. Also puts men. Uh, with privilege in a difficult position in many in many on many occasions. So it's something that that um, that is important for everyone. Um, although of course these topics are usually interesting for women, and women are the ones who attend uh, events when we where we talk about these things and they meet and they organize and things like that. But but, but we still think it's something that that should involve everyone. Um, and in addition to that, talking about men and women here is an oversimplification. Uh, it's, um, we, we do this because, uh, of course, depending on the context, that's, that is perhaps the, the, the um, most urgent <coughs> concern, but the approach uh, towards these topics should be intersectionality, actually. So people are... Um, crossed by different kinds of uh, oppression and privilege, like class, race, uh, the fact that you are migrated, that you are disabled, or uh, many other factors. And we shouldn't forget that we are talking about privilege in society and not simply about male privilege. Um, this is not about, mainly it's not this liberal feminist view that uh, privileged women should have more access spaces that only privileged men can can um, access so that is that is also important um, but that said um, it's still important to to stress that um, the fact that we consider the situation of privileged men uh, is is, um, is urgent uh, and to a certain extent, uh, the things that we've been discussing assume that on many occasions it is men the ones who should adapt to the ways of doing that are, um, that make women make they feel more comfortable with. Uh, it doesn't mean, um, again, um, adopting feminine ways of, of being in the world, but but it means uh, leaving certain really masculine ways of doing. Uh, so even if it's not about men and women, this, this dimension is still relevant. I mean, why should everyone adapt to, to um, masculine ways of doing and not men reflecting on their privilege and their ways of doing and adapting to other people's ways of doing? So that's also part of the approach. And, and why this is important, because it's, um, because it's fair for privileged people to adapt to other ways of doing, but also because there are some ways of doing that are more common amongst women uh, and, and people who belong to non-privileged uh, groups. 
that are uh, more valuable in themselves. There's lots of studies that show that, uh, I don't know, tendency towards cooperation, uh, care, um, diversity are more um, uh, common amongst uh, non-privileged men. So it's, um, it's also a taking, a, it means taking a stance on, on these issues uh, because, because of who um, is in practice acting in a certain way and not in another, in another way. Um, and I'm a bit theoretical now, but, uh, but, it's, but there's also, um, it's important also to stress that we don't understand um, mm, gender in a binary uh, way where there's men and women, this is, we, of course, this, we, we think this is a continuum. There's, there's um, like many possibilities in between, uh, and but it's, it's an oversimplification. So I, I ask you to keep that in mind when I say men and women. Um, I, we don't really mean that. Uh, and it's also important to to say that um, feminism, as such, is. It's, I mean, it's difficult to say that feminism is one thing. Uh, of course, most of you know that, but there's different kinds of feminism that um, are more useful for different kinds of, of people. So that's that's also part of the approach. Um, and we are not really taking um, um, a position uh, in that regard. But still, we are rejecting some styles of feminism. The the one that is in particular this this liberal feminism that simply wants to have more women in power positions and and encourage women to behave like men and to become successful and privileged as well. Because this forgets that most of the women who don't have that privilege will never be able to, to do that. And it's not really assessing the roots of um, privilege in our societies, which is not the fact that men, certain men have uh, the the, 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 this, this access to, to certain positions, but, but the ways that we behave that give values to certain uh, ways of doing and not, not to, to others. <coughs> and the final point, I guess, would be um, that we understand and we want, you know, in every project, feminism to become um, a cross-cutting issue. It's not something that belongs to uh, groups of women who are obsessed with this and trying to resist and I mean of course that is important but it should be something that should cross uh, through all the things we do uh, which is really complicated because it's hard to keep that on the agenda all the time because in every in post probably in every environment there's always um, bigger priorities uh, but we, we would like feminism to be something that everyone, I was saying that before, but that everyone considers in everything we are doing and not simply um, something that a group of people is in charge of and, and they make proposals about these issues, which is usually the case in most organizations and groups. Um, and then for you to have an idea of why we are addressing this topic uh, in, as I was mentioning before, in the municipalist uh, environment. So municipalism uh, is connected to, so very broadly understood, it's connected to um, building power, political power from where people actually live in cities, towns, uh, neighborhoods, and where, where people actually interact with each other. Uh, and, uh, and instead of uh, going for, for instance, um, states and like, bigger uh, levels of, of government. Uh, there's many reasons for that. We could talk uh, at some point about that, but I, I just wanted to make clear that this is the, these are the kinds of organizations that we've been working with. Local organizations that, that sometimes run for elections at the local level, sometimes they don't, uh, but in every case there's an understanding of how building power from the local level should engage both the local pub, uh, public institutions, social movements, and citizens in different kinds of collectives in a way that uh, 
allows people to build political power. Um, I mean, that have, can have many meanings, but um, but I think it's enough for for, for this um, this moment. Um, and it also um, so so we think there's a there's a close relationship and a and a good fit between feminism and municipalism, and this perhaps for many other reasons, but mainly because municipalism is looking at how politics um, is done, and in that way feminism is really important. It's not simply about winning local institutions and being the one who who is in charge. Uh, it's about um, changing the way we relate with each other, um, getting rid of the old traditional ways of um, of doing politics in traditional political parties, even in the left, and especially in the left, in on many occasions, like really vertical and big organizations uh, that have a theory of what's going on and what's wrong, and, and try to push that agenda forward. In many cases, failing in doing so. Um, but being right in what's what's what needs to be done, and, and so municipalism aims at changing that. So that's why feminism is a is a good ally. Um, and on the other hand, because feminizing politics is easier to do uh, if you work in smaller uh, at a small scale where people actually live, where where there's more space for experimenting, for trying out new stuff, for doing things differently. It's really hard to mm, build a, or an organization that works in a feminist way if you have a national political party, uh, like a big organization where people don't even have time to share um, their, their work together. So yeah, that's why we connected these two things. Um, and yeah, so that's the, the broad um, context of this of this work. And then there's, as you can see in the in the sheet, there's what we've been doing is trying to identify dimensions of the feminization of politics. Uh, and there's probably more, but these are the ones that have come out um, uh, so far. These are gender balance, is the first one. And it means not only um, achieving more equality in positions of responsibility, visibility, and things like that, but also um, distributing, um, internally distributing visibility, responsibility, um, decision making power, care responsibilities, um, and things like that within uh, groups. And so it doesn't simply mean having, <coughs> I don't know, the same amount of men and women in, in uh, visible positions, but also for people who, who speak in public or representatives or things like that. Um, and well, we, we can talk about that more uh, in a minute. I, I'll go through all of those dimensions. So the, the second one is um, power. So how can power be built or and understood in a feminist way? There's, there's lots of discussions about this, um, like outside this domain. Like what does power mean from a feminist perspective? Uh, and we mainly connect, um, we've been trying to connect the, the, um, the same of building power with, in a feminist way with cooperation as a, an alternative to building power through confrontation and imposition on others, over others. Um, so that's, that's the second issue. The third one is um, leadership. Like how, of, co of course there's also a lot of work that has been done around feminist ways of leading and um, we are trying to depart from this traditional idea of leaders being the strong the strong ones, the ones that make decisions over others. It's, it's really closely connected to how we understand power, but there's more about leadership. Um, and uh, yeah, not, not all, well, we can say more about that. Um, but yeah, that's another, another point. 
Um, then the fourth point is care. Uh, and as, as Steve was mentioning before, care is not simply about considering the fact that some of us have children or, uh, or animals uh, that, that depend on us or um, other people, like um, old people that, that for some reason depend on us or, or different kinds of, of care responsibilities. But it's also about how we can <coughs> make sure that care is part is a consideration that um, is part of our relationships with our peers, that we take care of each other in everything we do, um, and also that care becomes part of the political agenda. Uh, it's not simply about like being nicer, as I was saying before, and, but that the issue itself um, is part of, of the, the aims and, and practices of any, any project. And the third one, the third dimension of care is self-care. Uh, sometimes there's thing, things that no one can do for us, uh, even if we get support. So um, I don't know you, but I can imagine that for for most of you, even if the context is really different, uh, there's a lot of uh, overburden and, and stress and um, burnout sometimes in, in the things we do. Um, so that's that's another important dimension um, connected to care. Um, then the fifth element uh, is participation and democracy. Uh, and by that we don't. I mean, of course, in, in like political, uh, let's say, organizations, this is uh, this is more clear. But I think it's relevant for any kind of group, groups, any kind of group where decisions need to be made, like who, who decides. Uh, and, and are groups and decisions self-governed or are some people deciding for others? So that's, that's the key point here. Um, of course, again, it's closely, uh, intimately connected to the other dimensions. And, and it's never really, it's never easy to separate those dimensions from each other because they reinforce uh, each other. Um, but still, it makes sense to separate them. And then the sixth point is diversity and intersectionality. As I said at the beginning, this is part of the general approach, but there are some, some things that are specific, um, and, in, and we thought it was interesting to address those issues uh, as a separate uh, point. Um, because it should be, although it should be um, a cross-cutting issue, uh, like feminism within organizations. Uh, sometimes it's, it's important to um, actually like, take a step back and see how you're doing in terms of, of addressing intersectional forms of, of oppression within your group. Uh, so, yeah, so that's why. Right. I don't understand what's intersectionality. Um, I, well, I, I said a little bit about this before, but mainly the, um, when we, from the point of view of feminism, when we focus on, on privilege, uh, it's impossible to simply distinguish, uh, use gender as a, as a criterion to, to determine where privileges are. Uh, it's not only men, it's, it's certain type of men uh, it's, and it's certain type of women. Uh, of course, ignoring the fact that women and men are like a uh, 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 um, problematic uh, distinction. Uh, but every person is crossed by different, uh, I mean, is, it, is in, in different um, situations in terms of class, educational, background, uh, race, um, abilities, um, I don't know, many, many other factors. Yeah, that for diversity. No, but it's not, it's not diversity, yes. A woman and you're of a particular demographic group, you have a different experience than a middle class woman. Oh. If you're a woman of a working class yeah. and disabled, it's different again. Yeah. It's that intersection, it's that crossing point. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're, you're subjected you. to different layers yeah. of yeah. oppression and okay. you're lacking different kinds of privileges <laughs> that other people have. If I'm a white woman uh, of a, with a certain educational background, for instance, of course I can say some men hold privilege 
uh, in relation to me in, in some uh, circumstances, but I'm still privileges compared to other people in, uh, in other dimensions. So if the point is not simply, as I was saying before, to put women into uh, positions of, of traditional power and we are addressing privileges, it's not enough to simply talk about gender. Uh, it's important to take all those considerations into account. And also because in practice, the kinds of, um, of uh, things we can do to address those privileges are different um, once, you cons once we consider the different situations in which people are and the kinds of uh, oppression that they are subjected to. So how to address these topics is needs you need different answers for different questions. Um, and of course we are aware that this, this, uh, this project, this study, um, has been mainly focusing on gender uh, issues, but, um, but still, these, these other, uh, I mean, and, and we think it's fine because we are, some of the things that we are addressing are actually um, able to change structures or ways of doing that will benefit everyone and not only uh, women and, and, and not only like equalizing the situation between men and women um, because once you start addressing you know care or or uh, decision making the distribution of decision making power or leadership this will start affecting different kinds of, of, of groups in different ways but still there's some things that you won't achieve if you don't address that topic as as a particular topic so that's more or less i'm not I'm not sure I'm being mm -hmm. here, but, um, and and by, and by the way I'm happy to like uh, to please interrupt me if, if anything doesn't make sense or or whatever so thank you for the for the question um, and then the final <coughs> the final topic is nonviolence and here well, mainly we are addressing different kinds of violence, macho violence that happens within within most groups uh, because of how we are used to uh, relating with each other. So, uh, and and by violence we don't mean like physical violence violence necessarily, but also verbal violence, psychological violence, environmental violence, uh, things that make certain people feel pushed out of of certain um, uh, spaces or, or environments. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how, so that, this, this is a, like a, a first um, description of all these topics. I, I was thinking maybe it would make sense to try to, because we have, what, one hour? One hour? Yeah. So, in order for me, to, to make this um, more interactive and useful, um, I thought it might be interesting to maybe, well, first, if you have any questions, we, we, we can talk about it. Um, and I feel, and I also feel happy if, if anyone has uh, an answer for those questions. Uh, but then maybe, since one hour is a lot of time, but not that much, maybe we could choose together some of those topic and reflect on on those topics more deeply and I was also thinking maybe um, we can leave some time for you to uh, talk with the person you have next to you about so we, before we choose the topics about make a short conversation about what's relevant to you from all these topics and maybe make a proposal together with the person right next to you would that make sense or do you have any other suggestions of what you would like to, to, to do? So it would, the proposal would be the questions, then talking to the person next to you <coughs> and identifying like, what's interesting for you uh, and then sharing mm. it and deciding okay. together which maybe two or three mm. topics that we can address together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would that make sense? Yeah. Well, it feels yeah. like also if you address one, you address all of them in some, <laughs> some way, shape or form. There's a crossing. Yes. There's a crossing that happens. Yes. Yes. There is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Any so any questions question. or comments first? Uh, yeah. 
Can I yeah. ask a question? It's, it's, um, what was the process in which this document or the, these which? notions or principles of feminization of politics were, were arrived at? Um, so for this, there's a, there was a first, um, so it's, it's actually a collection <coughs> of different projects. Uh, but the first one was um, uh, through the, I don't know if you've heard of the Fearless Cities Network, is um, it's a network of an informal, uh, if in, 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 in maybe not even a network of municipalist platforms in different, in different places. And we created a group uh, with representatives of different organizations where we, where we started reflecting together about these issues internally and sharing it with the group. And we met a few times, we organized um, all, those, uh, all, the, all the topics that came out, and we came out with a list of like, categories within that group. And then after that, some, some of the people involved in that project um, started this new phase of interviewing people in different uh, contexts. So the first project was within Europe, and, the, and then we started interviewing people from those organizations, but also outside those organizations. So it was, and, and the categories changed a few times. Uh, we, we actually, at the beginning, we had like, like more than 10, uh, maybe like 15 categories, and we, then we like organized them into uh, fewer categories. And, but, th but this, as, as I said at the beginning, it's not fixed, it's just a, just a working, mm -hmm. district, working division of, of topics. Um, but, yeah. And Lara, there's a book now in English on Fear the Cities. Yes, it, it's in it's in, it's it's been translated to English yes. now. Yeah, which is a fantastic book. Yeah, it's a, it's a collection of of um, um, of short, really short pieces about public policies and also about organizational issues, uh, sharing the experiences mm -hmm. of different municipalist organizations in many places. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question going back to the intersectionality. And of course, we know that within the movement recently there have been problematics in those intersections, especially around race. And I think the biggest, I think, complaint is being, for people of colour in particular, has been about how their stories and dialogue is ignored. So I guess my question to you is you've talked about intersectionality, and I was really refreshed to see this is part of your um, discourse, but um, what, what are you doing? I'm just trying to think practically, what are you doing to ensure that that dialogue's maintained? Because a lot of these communities feel they've sort of been let down, they've sort of been ignored, so I'd just be interested to know what your approaches are around that. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really, it's a really good point. Um, I must say that although this is, uh, part of the agenda. For most municipalist organizations, before we started talking about it, it wasn't even an issue. They, most of them di didn't. Most of them di didn't even consider that to be uh, a relevant uh, topic. Uh, because, so t not to justify, but to explain what what the context is, we are working with organizations that work in very different uh, political contexts from. Uh, South Africa or Brazil, for instance, where this is, of course, an issue that they have, uh, they've been working a lot, they, they talk about it, like everyone knows what we're talking about, and things like that. But then, in other places, like, um, for instance, some, I don't want to point at anyone, but in some regions, these topics are not, uh, not, well, no, but it, it's, they're not part of the agenda. In some places, for instance, um, uh, gender diversity is is um, uh, is an issue, and LGTB uh, is a uh, is uh, one of those um, uh, dimensions that they consider not only not, not only uh, gender understood in a in a binary way, and also class. But then not race. So, yeah, it's uh, the contexts are, are really different, and 
And it, it is probably, together with nonviolence, mm -hmm. I would say it's probably the two issues that, are be, that we are finding harder to address. Perhaps the, the, the fact of nonviolence is quite surprising because it's mm -hmm. quite obvious, mm -hmm. but in practice, most organizations hadn't uh, engaged in any reflection about, about those issues before. So, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I can only say I agree. I mean, <laughs> there still needs to be more, uh, more work on those, on those dimensions. Yeah, have um, you seen any practice that yeah. sort of, yeah. it's, probably, it's uncomfortable. So have you seen practice where people are like really pushing, pushing to pass that uncomfortable space to so the ones that are looking at it? Is the sort of good examples of good practice that you've come across? Um, yeah, the case of the case of well, perhaps if 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 well, I don't know. I'm I, I'm hesitant here because I'm not sure if this is one of the topics that we yeah. want to address. But yeah. okay, that's great. Um, so in practice, for instance, the case of um, of uh, Belo Horizonte is we have a municipalist platform there that. Um, they, they have this really crazy way of organizing, well, crazy. Um, they have what they call a collective mandate, um, where there's people running for elections, they have representatives, but there's a big group of, it was 40 people, I'm not sure how many there are now, uh, people who come from social movements and different kinds of groups who are actually the real decision makers, right? It's not the representatives, the, one who, the ones who are like presenting projects or or things like that, but it's um, it's this collective that that um, that is in charge, right? And for them, of course, uh, in in the in the context where they they live, they live. There's there's three uh, main categories that they consider for everything they do, and it's hard to say like what tools because for them it's really natural. Uh, they, the fact that they have discussed this, uh, and the fact that they, um, they um, uh, are, I don't know how to put it, um, that it's part of, the, of their, well, I'm, I'm getting in, into trouble here, because it, they, maybe they have already addressed the issue and, and it's less difficult for them to find ways of addressing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but they they consider gender race and uh, and sexual diversity as, as criteria for everything they do uh, mm -hmm. and for the representatives they choose they simply don't cannot uh, um, ignore those those different criteria when when doing anything um, so I guess so that there's some things that I that that you can find in the sheet, but I guess what the strategy for for to address these topics have has been, and now I'm also talking about my experience in Barcelona, has been to uh, in, especially in situations where there has no there's no work on those on those issues um, to to create a group that will focus on those issues in particular, mm -hmm. even though it needs to be a cross-cutting um, issue, it, it has proved to be uh, useless if there's no people who have the specific responsibility of taking care of, of, that, of those uh, topics. So um, in many cases there's been, um, people have created these groups to focus on, on this kind of work and the, these groups have been engaging with um, organizations that uh, have more experience with um, different kinds of groups. And here the key is, of course, um, to ask people from th these different groups what they need and what they expect instead of, uh, of um, taking the lead in like tr going um, going for them and, and asking them to participate. And actually what what has been uh, the conclusion in many cases is that when you reach out to people and ask them simply to participate, it doesn't work. Uh, 
And for instance, in the case of Barcelona and Comú, um, the experience was that people who were migrated or, well, especially migrants, I would say, they, they don't come to any kind of assembly-like uh, activity. They, they just simply, they're just simply not interested. Uh, our uh, diagnosis is that perhaps the kinds of, of dynamics that are happening there are hostile uh, for, for those people. I don't know if that's right. Mm -hmm. So my English is fake sometimes. Uh, um, so there's been, um, there's been a trial and error uh, process of asking people what kinds of things they are interested in, in doing and what kind of engagement they, they want to have. And for instance, it might sound uh, strange, but the, the best examples of um, including different kinds of, of groups ha have been related to concrete actions like um, campaigning and uh, for instance, the door-to-door -door campaign that we did at the beginning of the year uh, was a kind of, um, of activity that everyone uh, was engaged in. Like, it, it was a really diverse um, uh, group of people that, that wanted to do that. But then when there's decision-making in an assembly-like uh, spaces, they, they just not interested. And, and perhaps the next step is to reflect on why, when it comes to decision making, there are certain people who don't want to be part of that. Because probably because they feel that they have no say, uh, or that they, their views, or the way they approach the topics and the dynamics are not appealing for them. Um, so I think, I mean, th there's more challenges than answers uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> at this point, I feel, for most organizations. Uh, not for the ones that that I was mentioning before, like like um, this platform in South Africa and the one in in Brazil. Um, okay. Could I just ask you something? Yeah. When you talk about the one in Belo Horizonte, you talk about Gabine Tona from Yeah. South? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, they actually call themselves an um, uh, is it? Uh, I don't remember now. Like anti-racist. Uh, municipalist uh, mm. political project. I mean, it's femi and feminist political. Project. I mean, they, they they put it like in the very title of their of their. Yeah, they have one member in the national parliament, yeah. one member in the state parliament, yeah. and two members in the city parliament. Yeah. yeah. And there's an there's an old woman. There's a. Uh, <coughs> well, yeah, there's two black women. There's a. Lesbian. I mean, there's. It's, it's all. All of them are women. It's like for them, it's like, like normal, normal stuff. Uh, and in, in the other, in the other organizations that we are working with, the visible faces are in most cases men, and the people who are working on these topics are in the very margins of the organization. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, I guess going back to what you were saying, I guess that. Both in the case of nonviolence and intersectionality, I think it's the, the poorest part of the. Uh, I mean, it, there's little to share at this point, and more to learn, I think, because there's there's. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's this, the conversations are just starting. Uh, but I think it's important yeah. to continue them. Totally. I, I think when you feel that you're not being part of something, it's not that I don't think they're interested. It's that. They think that there's no representation of their voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, exactly. or they don't even feel like they're, they're in the room equally. Totally. So it's that sort of thing, and I, I, I just think the key thing that I've learned over the years is you just got to keep that dialogue going. Yeah. You know, you've got to keep it going. So if people drop off. Why do they drop off? How do you get them back in? It might be other ways. It might be that they're all going to work at night time or, or something. Mm -hmm. It could be some very simple reasons, mm -hmm. but. Just really interesting in how you keep it going because it comes up all the time. So yeah, and keep the conversation open, allowing those people to take the lead as well, yeah. and not um, not not thinking that you have the answer. I think I think it's it's really hard 
I mean, it's, I, I must say, it's one of the dimensions where I feel more powerless in order to, um, to think about uh, what to do, personally. Of course, it's not mine to do, but uh, um, yeah, not totally. So, but do you know that in, in, in Barcelona, so um, for example, so migrant uh, groups have been organizing parallelly um, in, in a horizontal way, um, and don't feel appealed at all by the politics of, of the government. Mm -hmm. You know this uh, this encounter in Lleida? You don't know about no. that, yeah? So I think it was uh, has been the most successful um, happening in this area, and uh, I think there were around 500 people uh, meeting, trying to organize themselves because they don't feel appealed by the government. Mm. Yeah, and uh, and and they they want power. It's yeah, power. I mean it's different if we want if you talk about the local government and organizations because the the mm -hmm. political party did did have I mean it's not interesting for everyone but did have like very many uh, <coughs> it's 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 engaged in a in a permanent dialogue with different kinds of, of organizations and groups uh, but still it's it's been really hard to. But this, uh, this meeting has been organized by women. <coughs> and uh, they were okay, appealing all kind of uh, gender identifications, mm -hmm. but uh, related to care and politics. Wonderful. <coughs> yeah. uh, it's not an invitation. Uh, um, I just want to put a share intersectional approach in feminism and um, I live and work in Russia under very um, strict conditions of patriarchy mm -hmm. and um, um, feminist community in St. Petersburg is uh, actually big but it's split on the all not only liberal and intersectional all uh, types of um, uh, all points of view and um, it's uh, uh, we have no like uh, the circle of intersectional feminists is very small, and uh, uh, um, still we have to work and uh, make changes all together and find that um, one language, mm. and it's very problematic point even within the feminist discourse in one seat in one seat and um, yeah and it was um, my point because I'm too shy to speak publicly <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, that's um, mm, uh, yeah I, I'm uh, always thinking how to find that how and how to build that uh, let's say sisterhood mm. um, with those uh, who are not agreed with, even within the uh, whole discourse, if we say feminism, and how to be closer to maybe colleagues um, from countries where it's more developed or common. Um, I'm talking from Russia, but I know that... Uh, affect organizations. For instance, um, there was a gap between those who had a formal position, like city councillors, uh, and those who didn't, when it came to having collective debates internally and things like that. Uh, but at the same time, the legitimacy of the work these people were doing came from this horizontal and big organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, I think that's more or less connected to what you were saying, right? So you you're not able to permeate those spaces with new practices, but at the same time, they are legitimized by the work mm -hmm. you are doing outside. Um, and it's bad, but it's much better than than nothing. So at least there's that. And there's, then there's another issue. <laughs> no, of course. I mean, yeah, 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 and this tension it can be can become a productive one as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and at least that's how we are understanding, and many organizations are under, understanding this this process of like 
being outside, being inside, and mm. and not, I mean, and, and having productive um, conflicts, and and also with social movements uh, that mm. sort of at some point felt that their friends were in the city council, but they they still had demands that were not going to be met by the new city council, and and, and things like that. And so this. Of course, it's difficult to talk about these things without considering how these other structures that you work with work themselves. Um, and one of the aims of municipalism was uh, to go into institutions to transform them. But it's really what you can actually do is really nothing. Because uh, you need, I mean, it's, it's slow, it's difficult, there's resistance, there's people working there, and it's not that, that easy. So that, I don't know, I think that's, I mean, it's difficult, I don't know, but, but there's productive tensions that can be found in those, in vo in those experiences, I think. But then, then, then there's this other issue of scale, right? It's not simply about different kinds of environments, but also scale, like working with, in, in places where you can see people and work with people, mm -hmm. and then scaling up to achieve greater things. For instance, in the case of many municipalist platforms, they got involved into regional or uh, national uh, politics. In some cases, they even um, presented candidates for the European Parliament and things like that. And the experience was also very frustrating. Like once you start scaling up, uh, the, the 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 few things that you are doing well uh, start to get lost. In the way, um, along the way, and I think it's one of the greatest challenges for everything we do, right? I mean, how to stay true but not irrelevant, uh, and it's it's really difficult. And I, when you present, when you introduced yourself, I I took note of the you mentioned the like working um, with a network, for instance, and I my view is that. One of the, it's, it might, might sound a bit obvious, but one of the answers might come from trying other kinds of, of um, articulation that are not necessarily, that not necessarily mean scaling up, uh, mm -hmm. but, but working as networks, uh, which is, of course, there's lots of people doing work in how to work as a network and the challenges that implies and things like that. But I think it needs necessarily it needs it, it necessarily needs to be in the feminist agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, and it hasn't been I feel it hasn't been addressed it hasn't been addressed that much. We don't really know that much about how um, working as a network is connected to feminism. Um, and if you do know things about uh, or, or Experiences or work around this, please, please let me know. Um, but um, it's what I, I feel it's one of the of the things that it would be interesting to um, defend more. Like trying to become relevant and visible, not through growing up or scaling up, but through scaling out and, yeah. and mm. interacting with others. Uh, and I think this applies to political organizations, but also other kinds of projects, like um, yeah, how to su support it, not only because you can support each other and things like that, but also to gain more visibility, to gain more, I don't know. Um, like a terrorist network. I very much resonate with this dilemma on, on how you how you maintain meaning but still uh, still relevant and uh, how you try to go into these institutions that still have the power and and I get an answer from you that you say that it's rather you should rather get the visibility maybe and the relevance through maybe through mass through, through to being more in networks but I wonder then are we building parallel structures to the existing ones that anyway now take all the resources mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how to deal with that. I, I still have this dilemma how you deal with the fact that you still have all these structures, they have so much power and, and most of the resources are there. Mm -hmm. And um, all this effort that we would make 
um, would would not uh, in in a, in a reasonable time come to the results. That that would mean that um, the, the 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 people that need resources would have access to them. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, for, for how I see it, the, the only alternative is to fall again into patriarchal ways of doing. I mean, if you want to get power fast and impact, like be efficient and impact where the power really is and blah blah. I mean, not saying that it it necessarily need, it will necessarily be successful, but at least some. This is the reasoning behind some of the experiments in happening in different places, like. Okay, we should do things as they have been done uh, because it works. And I don't. I think it's a really, it's a really difficult question. Uh, but I, but again, I know, and I, I'm speaking from the municipalist uh, perspective now. I think part of the municipalist approach is to, at the same time, relating. To, to institutions that have this kind of formal power, of course, this, these are not multinationals and uh, they don't have a real power, but at least, but they have some resources and power that civil society doesn't have. Uh, but relating to local governments is less dangerous than relating to other kinds of institutions, and then working as a network in order to. Uh, work to, to spread geographically and things like that can be combined and and also local governments can work as networks instead of um, relying on, on higher levels of government and things like that. I mean, I, I'm using this example because it's the one I know, but, I, but I, I feel it might apply to other kinds of relationship with cultural institutions, uh, fun funders, and many other kinds of, of environments. Uh, but I don't think there's an answer. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, it's also not a question, but like a rhetorical question in Russian. Uh, yesterday we unpacked, as all of us unpacked, uh, not unpacked, uh, we discussed the Lebanese revolution and uh, I think if intersectional feminism, something opposite the revolution, or um, is it the other way to make a revolution? I don't know. Hmm. Do you want to explain why? Um, why? Why would you? I don't mean uh, the exact revolution in the but. Uh, um, uh, Lauren, she's not here, and she focused on feminist um, uh, influence, I would say, uh, on it, or male participation in it, <coughs> because it was, uh, in the presentation, it was not known clear what um, that is feminist or not, it was about more gender roles, um, mm. yeah. and uh, um, at the end, um, I don't remember who, but it was a great comment that, okay, evolution can be peaceful, but it could lead for the very violent processes afterwards. Mm. And um, how do I think that, um, um, Intersectional feminism uh, could uh, be the key for, um, like for a new society, a new type of society. But um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, in Russia, it's very small circle, and uh, um, as I see, intersectional feminism. Um, avoid any violence or and revolution and how if even if it's peaceful it could lead to violence upwards because people um, yeah. all together after uh, against for example government but what's the next yeah, yeah. yeah. 
um, it's not a question, it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wonder to what extent that is contextual or, or is it the case for every intersectional, intersectional feminist? It's a good question. I don't know. I don't know that much about what the, the specific contexts are. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, but it's um, it's more connected with the previous plot. I just was. Uh, it's also rhetoric questions, rather uh, next challenge. I'm thinking about. Uh, I'm thinking about the overproduction as a kind of um, thing, which is also against feminization because. Uh, I'm working in a, uh, mostly in theater and uh, with my organization we try to uh, create the conditions of uh, equal uh, place to work, to, to uh, make art and make social projects. But uh, I'm working quite often with institutions, public institutions, mostly theaters and galleries. And uh, for me, the question all the time is how to, um, because it's my experience as well, uh, how to um, get rid of the uh, this uh, primate of overproduction when, uh, for example, um, many, many uh, people, also directors and people who are in charge of the institutions uh, declare the, the same values as feminization, equality, etc. But uh, at the end of the day, when it comes to realization, uh, what is what is uh, you know uh, uh, the, the focus is on the effect, mm -hmm. and uh, in this kind of overproduction mode and speed of work, uh, it uh, tur it turns out that there is no place for care, for uh, justice, for. Uh, these all values we are declaring, uh, we have in declaration. So, for me, it's uh, really painful because it's kind of experience of fiction, also in our bubble. And the question is how to deal with it. Of course, uh, there is no no um, simple answer, and probably uh, the way is to create other structures, experimental one. And I believe in that. that, that. But in the same time, when we have uh, institution which is big and have resources and all the things we are talking about. And also, uh, <coughs> somehow, is good uh, environment to create because uh, of infrastructure and whole things which are prepared to do the things. And in the same time, it's so difficult to, uh, let's say, change these default settings which are concentrated on overproduction. So I'm thinking also about this aspect of uh, no li liberal capitalistic way of uh, producing in in art that. It's really uh, kind of hi hidden, maybe even visible, but so um, so strong. Uh, the, the settings are so strong that uh, it's not not easy to deal with it and to um, <coughs> uh, make feminization not only in declarations uh, mm -hmm. and in this level of philosophy. So yeah. it's it's it may it may sad. So I'd like to share with you this. If I may just react to that, because we also have kind of similar experiences, both of us, in the same, but also in different institutions. But I think it's also related not only to the overproduction, of course, but I think it's also related to the way how the artwork is being perceived. Is in many in many institutions we were working with, our experience was like there was always the result that was really the criteria to um, evaluate the work mm. of the institution. Yeah. Mm. And what we have been trying to do in one of the institutions, mm. are still trying to, in one of the city theaters in Warsaw, is to shift the mindset in a way of the institution, mm. of its um, directors, from the result to the way how it is done, and mm. from the perception of the art mm. as a process, as a, as a, um, tool to, that produces artworks to the perception of the art as a social practice, mm. that you not only mm. pr produce artworks, mm. but you mo first and foremost produce the social relationships. Mm. And therefore, but then it, it's, a, it's a really complex process because it also then requires 
a change of the way how the institution is being evaluated mm -hmm. and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So it's complex quite. Absolutely, but again, and it's extremely frustrating. I know. But on the other hand, I totally um, I get your point. If we don't try, we may fail in that particular institution. But if we don't try this to, this, mm -hmm. to implement this change, if we don't raise these questions, then they will not be addressed. So, but w if I can add something to that, it, it's also I think uh, we're talking about that. That is also connected with perceiving the role of artists and the role of uh, art in the society. When, especially in theater, I think it's uh, it's not only in Poland. Uh, uh, there is kind of um, the traditional way of perceiving, for example, director, especially male director, but um, director is that it's person who. Uh, you know, his vision and uh, his right to ex execute things. Right. So mm -hmm. it's it's way of. Uh, so so I think that, that, that this change we need it's really in each level, uh, and it's it's really uh, probably it's also for sure it's also connected with artistic education and the way we are doing that and the, as as Marta said perceiving art as a laboratory of relations as well not only a way to producing. Uh, stuff uh, things uh, so um, yeah it's, it's just and our challenge that those conversations are having a director level like mm -hmm. so we have the we're working towards our next business plan and and we have two columns for everything that we're doing which is what we do and how we do it mm -hmm. and we give measurables mm -hmm. and deliverables exactly. on each of those things and That's they really may not be quantifiable in terms of like output or numbers mm -hmm. but they have to be quantifiable mm -hmm. in that um, Team, team um, speaks more equally at a staff meeting would be a milestone, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So these are some of those things. It's like it's not maybe the way we want to work because it's mm -hmm. still answering those like the big books, but um, uh, it's like a way of showing our funders who basically really that business plan is for or in a way mm -hmm. um, that that they, it's like um, a tangible piece of work that's happening. That like, that is the work. The process. Is Acknowledging mm -hmm. the yeah, very exactly. work that is being done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sadly, one of my roles is to wrap <laughs> at a certain point, and typically that comes at a, you know, at, at a vibrant moment. So apologies for that interjection. Is there anything that you would like to put into the space there as a last? You Final work before you leave Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have my email on the sheet. If you if you feel like you, I mean, we didn't do what we suggested, but it's totally fine because we jumped from to one topic to another. But if you want to, I don't know, uh, with not only me but the group, we've been, I don't know, uh, in contact with many people who have more resources and tools and and could, I don't know support any of the work you want to do in this um, domain so feel free to contact me and I could if I can help I will and otherwise I will try finding someone who can. can so I, is, is it possible to email the yeah. checklist so we can actually share that more yeah. widely and we sure if that's yeah. alright. I have it I can share okay, it. Okay great, really got it. fantastic. And oh, also the, the deeper research that... It, it will be published soon I have I don't know when probably in the coming month, but we yeah we get we could also share it yes yes of course. Is that is that in English? Yes yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will be uh, we are in the editing process now, but it will come out probably in December. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. So it's been a great privilege, certainly for me. I thank you very much, Lara, and yeah. the rest of us will just say, uh, express our appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> Lara, no, thank you. Uh,